she had said this in many ways when we came across this at North, the Northwestern uh, Oak Life Center um, site and said, for many years we had many people who learned to do these things. This is no longer the case now. It is necessary that we be careful that we do not lose these things in our ways. Our grandmother tried to show us how to weave meal uh, baskets. And being kids, we were more interested in other things. So uh, at this point, I know it was some basics, but as far as like actually producing a basket, it would take me tremendous time to do it. But uh, I think really it's, it's something that uh, we need to bring back for our kids and our future our generations. And uh, my daughter is, and my wife and my son, they, 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 they burned some of this from our cousin who were prior. And of course she passed away and Olga continues to, uh, uh, to be part of our uh, uh, lives in that what we learned from Olga, uh, we, we will carry, carry that with us forever. And, uh, we, and hopefully our kids will continue with their kids. Their kids will go on future generations. Yeah, we're very excited to come to this workshop and I really appreciate all the uh, ladies for coming in. But uh, the long leaf pine needle basket is a, is a huge tradition in the Kushada tribe and so is the cane basket, but very few people make the cane basket nowadays in our tribe. But um, like, I think it was Marta that was, uh, Marjorie that was saying this morning, uh, the basket is a huge economic impact in, in the tribe back in the 50s, 60s, even till now. It's, a, it's always been an economic um, delivery to each individual that makes the baskets. So, and, and it still does. So. But today, it's, um, you can see more of the artwork through the baskets. You can see like some of the stitching is very different for each individual. Um, I've learned from working in the heritage department that you can actually look at a basket and know like what family made it. So that's something I've learned and I'm very appreciative of the art and of the craft and I'm very thankful to be here. I was adopted into the Alabama Kashada tribe and I enjoy making baskets and beadwork and whatever uh, Sharon calls me to do for the uh, cultures and languages and beadwork and basket work, that's what I do. And uh, 
I learned how to make baskets from my, from my mother. These are two of my, two of my sisters, Myrna and Margie. And um, Myrna is the baby and she was mama's baby. And she learned, she learned how to make baskets when she was a little girl. And Margie, she learned at the younger age I don't know how old she was, but she had already told you how old, about how old. And me, I tried to learn, but when we had company, there was always coffee on the, on the stove. When company comes around, to George, go make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's what we did, well, that's what I did. And then, by the time when I sat down to try to make baskets, it was like dinner time, supper time, and we said, start the stove. That was a good stove. But anyway, I learned how to cook. She taught me how to cook. The first thing I did learn was how to make cornbread, and from then on, I was cooking while the others were making baskets. But at the, Maybe I was about 10 or 11 years old, that's when I started learning how to make baskets. And I really enjoy every day when I work on finding little baskets, you improve or you learn something new as you work along every day on the baskets. But when you, when you make a basket, and Put the lid on, you throw something in it. And the court building, they put all the problems into that basket and pull them. But when the next meeting comes up, they open that and let it all out. So that's what the, one of the basket means to the tribal court. So the basket means a lot of things for us. I don't know what I would like, but uh, this is about all I can say for right now. And we make different baskets like pioneers. We make it into pioneer baskets, and we make it into bahia grass that you don't cut the grass out of, and then we make sage grass, sage grass, and, uh, or even sweet grass basket. Those are the three types of material that we use with wrapping. And we dotted the racket to make it into different decorations, uh, designs, or diagram, red flowers, or with, uh, with uh, uh, animal effigy baskets and all that. All different types. We made, they made baskets in the old days to trade to put food instead of you know, selling it for some money. Uh, my grandmother made uh, sugar cane baskets before she started, and before they started making baskets, my meal baskets. They traded it uh, for food, and nowadays they you know, sell them for decorations. And I prefer color just because I like the way it looks uh, on the natural background. Um, I do natural uh, baskets. Well, probably not as much as color. I just love for mine to have more color. And also, it kind of sits a little bit away from everybody else. Um, let's see, our tribe is about 500 or so members. We're state recognized at the time. Um, I think the technique I use with my straw, I live closer to the Pistachio National Forest. And uh, I get a permit from there. They allow me to go out in the forest and gather. Um, I usually gather in the fall. Um, matter of fact, it's soon will be time for me to go gather. I gather straw and I also gather the long leaf um, pine cones. They're really, really huge. Because I use that in a lot of my design work. Um, as well as I also gather smaller pine cones because I use the smaller ones also to incorporate with my large ones when I'm doing effigies or just the extra design of that. Um, I'll dye the pine cones uh, one by one, and then I'll sew them on my 